Man, I'll tell you what. It's days like these, and I'm really, really, really glad that I get to talk to you after every game. Today's a Tuesday. We don't usually record on a Tuesday, but we just got finished playing against Detroit. At Detroit, it was a tough loss. I, I'm not thrilled about it, but look, here's the thing, bro. We're young, we know that, but we're playing another young team. That's why it kind of cancels out and we feel like, hey, we wish we would have got that win. But let, let's just be real right now, bro. Let's just be real, okay? We started this entire podcast for one reason. We wanted to put a positive spin on the rebuild and the development of this team. Yeah, man. And this is our time right now to do that, like you say, bro, on fleek. Because people are down on Dort. They're down on Baisley. They're down on everybody except for Shea. They're down on Giddy in a real bad way, bro. And we, we dedicated our last podcast to Josh Giddy's work with Chip England. But this, we just have to uh, stop everybody in their tracks, bro. And and just I don't know, punch him in the face. Anybody who's 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 talking shit on Lou Dort right now. I I've got an entire you know tweets out there that I just took snapshots of, um, of or snaps of that I'm going to get to later on in this podcast when we get to Dort. But let's just be honest. You know, last the second half last night was dirtier than a hooker's uh, panties, bro. Bam. That's it, man. Like, guys have bad games. You know, unfortunately, it seemed like we had a whole string of bad games in one half. That's it. Because the first half, we played outstanding. 33 points in the first quarter, 30 points in the second quarter, and we held them to 48 points in the first half. That's it. Like, to me, that was an incredible first half. But then you get to that second half, and we scored a total of 40 points in that second half. What the fuck? You know, like, something happened. And I, I think what happened, what we saw was we just saw players be content with shots that they typically wouldn't have taken when we walked in with a 15-point lead and came out. I think players just took a deep breath and was like, okay, you know, we did this. And Trey Mann came out in that first half row, three threes looking hot, looking good. And then the second half, it was just like, okay, he focused on rebounds. He just had some great assists out there, got a steal. But still, man, I, I feel like there was just something missing. And it's just like nothing was falling for us in the second half. It, it, we didn't have bad shooting necessarily. We, we shot 30% so from threes. Let's talk about that, right? Like both of us being former coaches, like we understand the difference between – a good shot and a bad shot, right? Yeah. Most people inherently do, okay? Yeah. And they understand, like, okay, that's within your range, and it's not. But as a coach, we understand that you encourage people to t continue to take good shots. And I would say up to this second half, like you're saying, <clears throat> for the most part, we have been watching the team take really good shots. Now, the second half, if those shots go in, you know what I mean? Then oh, yeah. we're like, okay, it's different. But – um, yeah, it's, and it's easy to look at those starters and say, okay, Shea, 33 points. He's the only player in the double figures here. So, and, and he deserves a lot of credit. Um, but that's really hard does. when you have four other guys starting <clears throat> with you and you have Dort 26, Giddy 25, Jalen Williams 31, and J JRE with 15 minutes as your starting unit. And, I, I mean, Shea's got more points than all, of, all four of them combined. So... Here's the thing. This obviously is like the question is who's going to step up. We had this question after the last game in the last game. But here's my question, bro. Yeah. What can coach do to help Shane? Well, I, I think that's what he's doing right now is trying to find the lineup that works best for Shay. That's why you see these minutes that are just scattered everywhere. You know, J, J Dub, I feel like does an enormously amazing job with Shay. So guess what? He had 31 minutes, most of those with Shea. So, okay. my so, go ahead. Well, let's talk, let's come Hustle. back to J-Dub because I want to talk more about him in a second, but keep talking. Kenny Hustle, another guy that does really well with with Shea. You know, he's he's trying all these different combinations right now, and everybody's like, oh, well, 
why is this person only getting two minutes and this person not getting any minutes? And why didn't um, Isaiah Joe get playing time? And why didn't Wiggins get playing time? It's because coach is trying to find the right lineups to work around Shea. And that means the minutes are going to be scattered everywhere. And guess what? That's just the way it's going to be. This team is young, okay? Shea's trying to figure out who he likes to play with at all times as well. And <clears throat> if you look at these guys, I mean, some of them just have bad games. And it's nothing wrong against Dort. He's still young. Nothing wrong against J-Dub. He's still young. J-R-E, again, still young. And Josh Giddy, I didn't feel like had a bad game. Okay? I, I understand what people are going to say about Josh Giddy and say, oh, well, he needs to do more. But Josh Giddy is a 9 to 12 to 15 point player a night, right? It's not going to be abnormal for him to not get double digits in scoring right now. But also, his rebounds, assists were down. His assists were down because the shots weren't being made. And that's he's also not playing a, more off the ball. Yeah, and that's not a dog on, on Josh being playing off the ball right now. He's learning a, a different shooting guard position. And I say shooting guard position, he's not playing the point guard on, on, on defense. You know, he's too big for that. He's not playing the point guard on defense. He's off the ball. You have Dort on offense. He's playing more the two guard, right? Josh Giddy's playing more of that, that three, hybrid three guard and point guard look, and he even goes to that corner. He's learning different aspects of his game right now. And this is not, I, I understand that people are going to be hard on these young men. It, it, it's inevitable. These guys are professional athletes, right? But it gets exhausting when you hear all these guys being like, this guy's trash, this guy's trash. And it's like, these guys aren't even at their peak yet. Like they're not done growing. Their peak is still three to four years away. And it's like, give up on him, give up on him. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dort, we have an incredible contract for him. If he played for Golden State or the Knicks or something else like that, he would have been signed for $120, $140 million. Like, what is wrong with people right now? I don't I don't get it, man. Twitter is full well, of a, just a bunch of well, assholes. It is Twitter. You're right. But it, it's also something, and it's one of the reasons – that I wanted to address it from the get-go, bro. It's something that we saw in the previous generations of the Thunder. There's this idea that, as a fan, that you're intelligent if you count the number of shots that players get, get and you say, oh, okay, you know, like, <laughs> we don't really want Dort shooting six threes a game. I'm a smart fan, and I'm going to go around and talk down on Dort's shot and how it would be better off if we were getting six threes from Shea, even though Shea doesn't want to shoot. He shot zero threes out of 23 shots. That's that's choice, right? Like, this guy wants to get downhill. And, yeah, when Dort gets downhill, he looks better. But there are growing pains, right? I anticipated this year that he would take a step back in scoring from last year because I felt like he got away with one last year, right? Like, people weren't taking him seriously. Now he makes the scouting report offensively. And look, he, he had a year where nobody cared, and then a year where it was like, okay, let's see if you can do it all year. And then he put up 17 points a game. This guy is going to be guarded. Now he's got to work through it. it yep. If you tell someone, like, do you remember how many people were like, oh, I wish Steven Adams would shoot? Well, like, if you tell someone, stop shooting when you're missing, you end up with someone who refuses to shoot. Yeah. So you have to say, like, look, we want you to continue to shoot. There's this process that the Thunder go through when it when players for shooting improvements. Some players obviously do better than others, but the first thing you do is you sh shoot the shots in games, yep. and then you go and you start practicing the shots. Now, people shoot jump shots or set shots. Those are the two options, but very rarely do people actually practice the shot that they shoot in games. Um, oh, yeah. That takes a lot of practice to learn how to practice with game-like intensity. And then you go and you say, okay, this is how the game shot looks. It's not how I want to shoot it. And then you improve your intensity and you practice and you, and you turn it over. Luke Dort is, has been doing that. He's like at the third or fourth round of doing that with his shot and his game, right? But now he's seeing people fly by him. He's yep. getting people running out at him. He's getting people guarding him. He's having opportunities to blow by his people, right? But there are going to be games like this. Mm -hmm. And, as much as we look at Detroit and we're like, oh, yeah, they're young. We don't have respect for them. Like, we really have a lot of respect for Isaiah Stewart and Sadiq Bey. Those two guys make it tough for us every time. Yep. They're the type of glue players that you want to build around. And I'm 
excited about what they're doing. Not a fan of Detroit's, but just a, a fan of good basketball and hustle players. They made it hard for us. And you have to tip your cap to them. But at the same time, how are we going to get out of the situation that we're in? Where you got Shea with 33, and the next closest guys are Moose and Kenny with 11 each off the bench. How do we get past this? Well, there's two names this year that we're going to figure out how to rely on. J-Dub and Usman Jang. Now, some people are like, ah, shit. That means it's going to take a while. There you go. That's the answer. It's going to take a bit. It's going to take a bit, and we're going to have to deal with that. But we weren't rushing this process anyway. And that's one of the things that we heard Shay reiterate. He understood that we are still in a process that includes losing as a part of it. Not because he wants to lose, but there's growth that needs to take place from people. And he can only lead the team so far by himself. Mm -hmm. J-Dub, I thought, played a good game, bro. But really, he kind of bookended his performance. 30 minutes, and I remember him early in the game making an impact, and I remember him after the game was really decided, kind of making another impact. But that after the game was decided type of impact was significant. I mean, in the, in the like you know, capture that moment and then kind of reference it. Like that pass was really special and, and his ability to score. So he just needs to be more aggressive. Is there anything else more to that? I I think he's one of those guys that is observing the game right now. Um, and, you know, it's a lot to say from being an NBA fan and sitting in the fans to all of a sudden being in the game and playing it. And I think that's what he's learning right now. And he's, you know, unfortunately for him, he missed a few games for that face mask or face injury. Um, and I think that's something. Man, and he to took a hit. It. He took yeah. a hit on that. So I shouldn't discount that mattering early in the game. But I'm sorry. And, keep and going. also, I, I want to say this about Josh Giddy too, is I don't feel like Josh Giddy is, is 100% yet from his, his uh, ankle sprain either. So I think that's something that people have got to take a deep breath about and, and you know, stop calling Josh trash because – like you're looking at Josh, you're looking at J, uh, J-Dub and, and, and Dort, all three had a bad game all at once and everybody's throwing them in saying, that's it. Hands up guys. That's, that's it for right now. We should have never got these guys. And it's like, I understand that there's people that are upset when we lose games, especially a game that we should have won when we had a 15 point lead at halftime. But guess what? Shit things happen. And in order for the good things to happen, you have to go through the shit in order to understand exactly what you need. Listen, this is not going to happen again. You know, Coach D is going to get a hold of those guys and try to figure it out and try to figure out what's going down. Because last year we watched it, the the big moments that he needed to make and, and, and those, the team needed to play, those big, those big halves that we were down a lot and they came roaring back. Listen, Coach D knows exactly what to do to get these guys going. And that's why we just got to take a deep breath and take a step back and just let him do what he's going to do. Because when push comes to shove, this team's going to be all right. So we saw everybody play who played. They played basically at least 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. JRE, he got right around 15 minutes. And so did Moose. All right. Now, JRE started, right? Let's also talk about shot attempts. The least shot attempts was J-Dub with six shots. Um, everybody else shot at least seven shots. Now, with all of that said, it would seem to me like the simple, like, ding-dong, you're a genius solution is we just need to make more shots. Now, sometimes you can say we're taking bad shots. Sometimes you can say um, that, like, uh, various things, like we're not, you know, we're turning the ball over too much, so we're not taking, getting enough shots. Like, there's different elements. But in the end, as a coach, if you say, basically, we just need to hit more of our shots, we're taking good shots, then you have to say, we can't overreact to this loss. And that's what I'm saying here. That's what this whole theme is, man. Like, no overreacting to this loss. We don't that's right. come at door and blame him. We don't come at anybody. We got to trust these guys. And one thing that we have to tip our hat, to them is the impact they made on the defensive end. Hmm. We saw numerous blocks, four from Shea, two from Baisley. All right. And we saw a bunch of steals, really, really good number of steals, three from Baisley on the steals level. So while people want to shit on Baisley, right? 
He had three steals, two blocks, five points, four rebounds, three assists. Yeah, it's only eight points, but get the fuck out of here, dude. This guy is, he's balling, and he is going to be a very good player, and I really hope that it's for the Thunder. And anybody who doesn't like Baisley, I would say probably doesn't really understand like how to like look at the small things, right? They just kind of mm. look at the box score. But right. Baisley's doing a lot of good stuff. And Baisley playing 20 minutes right now, I know there's a call out for people saying he needs to play more minutes right now. Yes, listen, Baisley is going to be that guy that's most effective if he's playing 20 to 25 minutes a game, okay? We've seen him stretch it out. He gets a little tired. You know, yes, he worked on his physique during this offseason and, and getting in better shape but he still is best if he does 20 to 25 minutes. That's why he's only getting 20 to 25 minutes right now, guys. You know, the, it's something Mark and I talked about last year is that it's cool if Baisley starts, but for that 20, 25 minute mark and then pulling him out and letting other guys play. And I, I still feel that way about Baisley. Like there's going to be games that he's going to come out and he's going to play amazing like this, where his stat sheet is going to be completely filled, you know, no turnovers at all, you know, five fouls, which means he's playing physical, like, you, you see these things, and you're like, okay, yes, this is what we need from Baisley. Um, but you can't expect him to play 30, 35 minutes a game at this level. That's just not who he is. And so if we expect him at 20, 25 minutes, it's great. You look at these other guys, like, we need to have minutes, more minutes out of Dort. He needs to get to that point where we're looking at his, his, his stat sheet and saying, okay, all right, you know, 15 points you know, five rebounds, two, three assists, a few steals here and there, and a block shot. Like, that is a great game for Dort, okay? He's not too far off of that. I know that's only seven points, but he has the rest of that stuff there, you know? His seven points, he took what they gave him. And that's simple as that. Uh, his three-pointer wasn't falling. If his three-pointer was falling, it would have been a different situation. But that's all it takes right there. Is Dort, I get it. People are upset about Dort right now, but he's still one of the best defenders in the league. And when you have a functioning offense with Shea, with Chet, with Josh passing the ball like he does, with Jalen Williams, you know, all these guys clicking, you're going to need a premier defender. And all those people that are sitting there saying, throw out Dort, throw out Dort, you know, fuck you guys. Because when Dort's shutting down one of their best players and in the NBA finals, you all can be like, Okay, maybe I was a little hard on Dort. Because Dort isn't going to be one of those guys. Yes, we do think that he can average 20 points a game in his career at some point. But he's not going to do that right now until he puts everything together. So at this point in his career, he, we're going to be expecting him to get to that, you know, 14 to 17 points a minute or uh, points per game. And that's it. There's nothing complicated about that with for Dort. And then as time goes on, he'll maybe add to that or whatever and have a couple few good seasons and, and do really well. But the majority of Dort's time for us is going to be known as that premier shutdown defender. We need that. We need that type of defender in the finals. And if we don't have him, the team that's going to be in the finals is going to have him. Man, with Dort, I know it's easy to look at it and be like, man, he's not shooting well. And I get that. But let's just imagine that he is shooting well. Right. Let's just go ahead and take a second and say, like, what does his game look like? Um, bro, he, he has this look, if his shot is falling, of a player that that pulls up like CJ McCollum. Um, that looks for his shot as soon as he catches the ball. Really, I'd say within five feet of the three point line, he's he's looking for a shot early now. It's not falling, so it's easy to say, hey, this guy shouldn't be shooting that much. But I guarantee he's knocking him down in practice. I guarantee his coaches are saying, keep shooting that shot. Because part of growing is growing pains. So if you're, like, afraid of growing pains, well, that I mean, you're still going to grow, but it's going to suck. Like, So stop being afraid of growing pains. That, that's what we have to say. Like, we, we have to recognize them. And then... Take a deep breath and remember what Sam Presti said, which is like, there's going to be a time where we look back and we say, this is how far we've come. Right? Yeah. If that's going to happen, like we have to say like, well, Lou Dort, he's like, to me, he, he could average 25 points a game. Yeah. I mean, I know that some people probably don't like hearing that because they'd rather, 
it be somebody else on the team. But the way that he shoots, the way that he's so aggressive offensively, like he has a killer mindset. Yeah. He he plays offense with the same approach he plays defense, which is he mm. attacks. And sure, his skill set isn't quite as refined as it is on defense, but he's a student of the game. So be patient. Yeah, man. And, you know, we've got one of those guys that we follow on, on Twitter. His name is Thunder Eagle Eye. Dude says 99% negative things about the Oklahoma City Thunder and acts like he really knows the game. And listen, he sounds very intelligent about the stuff he says negative about the team. But this particular one, I was like, oh, man, right? He goes, I see a lot of slander toward Josh Giddy and Darius Baisley on the timeline. But I still don't know why Lou Dort is not not a big talking point here. Like, he started off so well. And then all of a sudden, just shit on Dort. And it's like, boom. And then you just go on and on and on. He just goes on and on about this negative, horrible context about how the Thunder is. And you got some other guys that are, are, are trashing on Josh Giddy, And it's like, like, I get it. They're trying to prove that they're intelligent, right? But that's why, to me, like, you, you look at a, a, a league like the NBL, right? You look at a league like the G League, and you see how they insulate the players and in, 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 in getting them, you know, good uh, media press, right? And, and this is why it's important, because th they all know it. Once they get to the NBA, everybody's going to get shit on. And it's hard. And it's harsh. And there's nothing you can do out there to try to, you know, train the narrative. You can just try to educate people on how to watch the game. But that's the problem, is that they don't want to hear it, because all they sit is they watch... Dort missed a three and throw up their hands and go like, fuck it, man. Dort fucking shooting more threes. But we look at it like, yeah, Dort, keep shooting, man. You'll get in that rhythm. You're all right. You got this. Because guess what? We do the same thing with Shea. We do the same thing with Josh. You know, we have this positive way of looking about it that, to me, like you see those negative Nancys out there, like uh, Thunder Eagle Eye, which is a total, like, ball buster, man. And, and you sit back and you're like, all he's doing is yelling at the TV for all the things that he thinks he knows the game about. I mean, I think you have to ask yourself, right? Like, what's the opposite of making a shot? For our offense, a lot of people think, oh, the opposite is obviously, you know, missing it. But really, for our offense, the opposite of making a shot is not taking a shot. And I think that assessment is important because people will look at it and be like, well, if you just took so-and-so shots, moved this many of them over to his, who's shooting this percentage, and then that would equal a win because that would increase the number of shots. And, and it's like, hey, like, yeah, that's not called coaching. That, you know, that's fine. You can do that, but you're not going to get very far. The assessment actually is this. If Shea passes it to somebody who's open and they don't shoot it, that's worse than them missing it. And that's why, to me, the opposite is not the miss. The, the, we have to build trust. We have to continue to work hard. But if all of a sudden you look at these field goal attempts, and instead of everybody having at least six, there's a couple of guys who had one or two, or most of them had around four. And basically what they did was they kind of, just as soon as they caught the ball, if they didn't take the shot, then they look to get the ball back to that person so they could break him down again and go back at it. That would be, that wouldn't be a good situation for Shea. So no. what we're seeing he needs is the, guys taking shots. He does need spreading he, the ball. And yes, he does need guys making shots. <laughs> Let's face it. That would be, that would be nice too, but they are never going to make a shot that they don't take. And they have to take a lot of shots that they miss before they're going to get to the point where they're making them. It's a part of growth and we have to understand that that's the phase we're in that, but here's the, all, the other key, right? We've been in that phase for the last two years, right? Where we understand that our biggest steps for improvement are going to come from hard work, internal improvements and things like that. It's, it's not going to come from an injection of talent. And one of the main reasons that that has been the case is because when Presti picks people, he doesn't pick players who are ready to help immediately, he picks the youngest player who's the furthest away from their peak as possible. So this team winning these games is going to be on the backs of players 
who have gotten better from within the system. And then they're going to inject players like Jang into the system who has an opportunity to be really good in the long run, but it's going to take time. It's all going to take time. And I know a lot of people have been ignoring the Thunder and now the Thunder are fun again. So they want to watch and they're going to you know see what happens. But it's a let's, roller coaster. let's enjoy the ride. That's right, right? man. You got the right? valleys and you got the ups and downs. Right. And if you hate the valleys, that's fine. Just don't get on the fucking roller coaster. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and looking at back to Thunder Eagle Eye, everybody needs a Karen in their life. And that's what these guys are. They're just a bunch of Karens. You know what I'm saying? And, like, all they're going to do is bitch and complain about everything not being right. Even when we have a team that's going to the finals, they're still going to nitpick and say, we would be a better team if we had so-and-so and so-and-so and and we traded some of our draft picks to get so-and-so. And And it's like, still, they won't understand what's going on. So everybody needs a fucking Karen. Welcome to the clubs, Eagle Thunder Eagle Eye. You are now a Thunder Karen. Congratulations. All right, man. That's a new award. We'll, We'll hand it out whenever it's needed. There's no guarantees. It's not an automatic reoccurring award. You have to really earn this one. Steve, Steve-O is another one. Yeah, we have to give him a oh. Thunder Karen award as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about, but I, I pretend like I don't. Because... <laughs> Yo, as soon as I saw who we were talking to, I was like, oh, man, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> you, you look like our cousin Alex, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, that's the thing about it, man. When that's what I hate so much about Twitter is like, you really don't know who you're talking to. And like, if they have a lot of followers, you're like, well, they must, I don't know, like have influence or be smart. I don't know what you assume, but then unfortunately you can't hide from video. But anyway, moving (laughs) to the next thing, bro. Um, (laughs) Look, and I'm not saying I don't deserve enormous amount of bullshit for even bringing Aaron Carter up on the podcast, but I just feel like I need to clarify. A few things. I was not into Aaron Carter. Okay. It's okay, that's, bro. It's that's okay. A, that's a total misconception. He, he who gets hard on Aaron Carter is his own book, the book of Dave. Look, there's a difference between wanting to kiss the girl that he is kissing and wanting to kiss him. <laughs> okay and i'm not saying okay, like man. when you, you talk about like explain. troy and you and you see like brad pitt's ass i'm not saying i haven't like looked but there was no there was never any sexual attraction to aaron carter i can definitively say that and i just i'd like to address the rumor that adam and brian started um that i was into him i don't know exactly how they knew that i would mention aaron carter on the podcast or that i had an opinion about aaron carter um but um, and, and also just b- based on your reaction right now, like, I just want to say also that <laughs> they were wondering why I didn't go on and on about him. Like I did. And I'm just saying like, Dave wants to end the conversation as soon as it comes up. So this is you guys, this is for you guys. This is me going on and on and on about it because you felt like maybe I undersold underemphasized. I don't know. Like, what else you want me to do other than put on my Aaron Carter t-shirt? But it doesn't fit me very good anymore, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's so good, man. It's so good. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one of his face tattoos. Oh, dude. Well, when we go fishing on Friday, we should talk about Aaron Carter and Britney Spears. Those be the art conversations. Well, let's when remind we get- everybody, when we went fishing, bro... It, like there's it's combat fishing environment like where people are like shoulder Literally, to shoulder on top of you almost dick to dick i mean it's bad and so whenever we had like a lot of intensity like people were like hovering around us the Cutting way that we told lines, each other kind of like hey like put your elbows out would be start talking about britney spears that was our code for like hey man people are encroaching so <laughs> this this trip bro it'll be the aaron carter trip in honor i'll just be like bro do you, do you see what happened with aaron carter there you go. There we go. Bro, did we you can... see what happened with Aaron Carter though? They they found out he was he was huffing um they think allegedly gotta throw that one in there. He was huffing air um air. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Compressed air. Really? Yeah. Dude. Wow. 
well. Well, I, I mean, they knew that he was doing that for a while, but then it was like, I mean, allegedly he was found with them next to the bathtub that he drowned in. So, well, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I yeah, we, we probably shouldn't tell that one on on here, but there is a story that I do have with look those that we probably should not talk about. <laughs> no, we shouldn't. And just, just in case, there's a lot of stories, right? But I have a friend that peed his pants. There's that one when he did it. So, right. I mean, but that's not that's not the story though. The other story but, is not not something we should talk about. As I mean, as much as like it's funny, that shit is fucked up. Let's just put it that way. And obviously, people get hooked to that shit. So, um, it it sucks, man. It sucks to see anybody get to that point of like addiction where they're you know, Whitney Houston in it, but. <laughs> Dude, don't laugh, bro. That's not funny, bro. You're talking about another dead person. I can't help it, bro. Oh, man. I almost <laughs> turned on the bodyguard. I've never seen that, but Kevin Oh, Ross, you haven't seen Houston. it? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, worth it's rated it. R. Is it worth it turning on with the kids or no? No kids. I mean, I haven't seen it since, like, 2010. That's good enough for me. So yeah, I don't yeah. know if you would really want my opinion on it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, man. It's not that bad. <laughs> but no. Yeah. If it's well, still holding an um, R rating, there's probably some tits in it or something. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody's going to compare Aaron Carter to Whitney Houston ever again, but, uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Can't say that. <clears throat> All right. What else do we have? Well, that, that game was that game was so fun in the first half, and it just bunch of shit so quickly. It was like, fuck. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. Okay, so generally speaking, we have more time to prepare. But since this is a Tuesday, we record on Monday. I'm sure on like sensational information, salacious information, so shall we call it? But I do have one fun, one fun thing we can do. We'll call it the right. one fun thing. The one thing. All right. Music coming soon. So here's the question, bro. Not question. Here's the story. Okay. Tyson Foods CFO arrested for public intoxication after falling asleep inside a stranger's house. Well. <laughs> so any thoughts? No? All right, here. An Arkansas woman found John Tyson, whom she doesn't know, sleeping in her bed. She called the police, who said they could smell alcohol on his breath. <laughs> Just wrong bed, I'm sorry. Well, look, man. I, I don't know. Like, I feel like sometimes like stories like this like turn up, and then they start peeling back layers, and they're like, oh, he's been doing this a lot. Oh, John Tyson is a serial bed sleeper. I don't know. Like, like, okay, like, I get it. If you live in the country and you like roll up to an old friend's house and you, you know, go in there and jump on the couch and go to bed, right? And then you wake up in the morning and realize that that wasn't the house. But like to go sleep in someone's bed, yeah, I, I feel like that's like, yeah, a little, a little strange there. That's I feel like we've heard stories about this happening, but. Look, and I don't want to get carried away. God knows I don't want to get carried away. But there was a time, right, where Kellen Win Winslow Jr., if you remember, like, I think he's in prison right now, right, because he was, like, raping elderly women. Wow. And, like, there was a story that kind of came out that it was he was arrested for trespassing at a trailer park. And it was like this, like, why was an NFL player hanging out at a trailer park? And then, like, his PR team came out and said, basically, he was profiled um, and yada, yada, yada. But then it came out that people started saying, like, well, no, no, he actually was going to these places to rape people, elderly people. And like, So anyway, I think he's in prison right now. Wow. My point is, I don't mean to compare these two stories because John Tyson, I'm sure he's an upstanding individual, but... I would say there's more to this story. Keep peeling back. We don't know why he's in random people's bed, but I think the obvious, <laughs> like, hey, we got the police on our side investigation is like, oh, he was drunk. 
He was drunk and he walked in and he slept in somebody else's bed. I think we have solved the case. We are the police. I want, yeah, man, that, that is, that is on, uh, on a whole new level right there. That's, that'll take a little time to figure out what's going on with that one. Did I say allegedly enough times? Because allegedly all of it. Yeah, dude, like it could be one of those situations where, you know, he took a girl home and she woke up and called the police and is actually in his own bed and she called the police. Dude, you know what? I think you should work for the Tyson family. Because entirely, like... He was can... in his own bed, guys. <laughs> I mean, I understand, like, the... Here, here's what I'd say. There... He's being charged for public intoxication, but he was in a private residence, okay? So it seems like he should not be arrested for public intoxication. He should be pu- arrested for trespassing. That would, that would make sense. Right, but, but here's the thing. Trespassing sounds way worse. Yeah. And, and you know what? They're in Arkansas. You know where Tyson Foods is? I think it's in Arkansas, right? Well, so there's a bunch of Tyson Foods they're, all they're like, okay, we got to arrest him, but what can we do? Public intox. Oh, yeah. Everybody gets arrested for public intox. Okay, how do we talk away the fact that he's in uh, this stranger's bed who doesn't know him? Uh, I don't know. Just put it in there. Public intox. All right. John Tyson, you are in trouble, and we are watching now. We are watching. Whoa. Google alerts. Set. John Tyson news. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. Nope. It's all going to be completely wiped away, and it's not going to be until, like we always say, they end up finding either dead little boys or hookers. And then we're like, Oh, John Tyson. Well, allegedly, well, I'm sorry. I think I, mean, I need to delete everything I just said, bro. I mean, we also have the, you know, that, that Kennedy that was found with, or his car was found in the, uh, Ooh. river with bro. Uh, the Potomac river with a hooker in the back. Of the yeah. Trunk. So not the Potomac you're talking about out on Martha's vineyard, Chappaquiddick Island. Right, yes. there's sometimes island over there, and um, I know exactly where you're talking about. And you're talking about Teddy, my dear, dear friend, Teddy Kennedy. T- That's Kennedy. right, guys. We have it all here. Conspiracy theories up the ass. We got. No, we didn't say. We didn't say he rumors. did it. We just said no. that there was a hooker that was found in his car's trunk. And she wasn't a hooker. River. She was his secretary, and but- I don't think she was in the trunk. But I love where you're going Bro, with it. It was way better before you was, started. <laughs> like, I think he drove off a bridge, right? He went home, went to sleep, woke up, called the police, and they found her in the passenger seat. Maybe the trunk? I don't know. I, I think she was trying to get out of the front seat, and the trunk is the way out. Bro, you fresh news <laughs> today or last night? I was getting ready to eat dinner, and there was some music on, and it was Eminem and Stan. And yeah, I was like, "All right, we can turn this off." And they're like, "Yeah." The kids were like, "Yeah, this is kind of sad." I'm like, "Yeah, bro." And that's what you just you just gave us a whole Stan <laughs> Stan scenario. Holy bro. shit! I haven't thought about that song in forever. All right, damn dude, that was that was a crazy one. Yeah, the Stan moment. Um, I'm just, I'm looking at some more of these messages. Um, is there anything else I need to clear up about Aaron Carter or do you think we covered it? Bro, you have definitely splurged him with a lot of love. I think you're good, bro. <laughs> right, bro. Put some man juices that way, bro. You're good. All right. So today, no NBA games. Tomorrow, Thunder back at, yes. at it. Who we playing, bro? I, I don't have that in front of me. I don't All right, we have the Bucks again tomorrow. Damn it. All right, followed by the Raptors. So there's that. <laughs> um, hey, we're going to get back to playing some good basketball. You know, one thing I'll say about the Thunder, bro, is that we had trouble in the first quarters. And then last night, we really played well in the first quarter. So we're correcting some things, you know, but then it's like whack-a-mole with some new issues. 
the other thing is we're playing Shea the entire third quarter. And I know a lot of people are like, hey, what's going on in that fourth quarter? Well, we're playing Shea the whole third quarter, so he's not playing the beginning of the fourth, fourth quarter. Yeah. He's really coming back in around anywhere from nine to seven minutes left in the yeah. quarter. He's getting a good five-minute break from that quarter. I don't want to be the guy that tells Coach what to do. I don't want to be one of those people who are like, oh, I got an opinion. But I do have an opinion, and my opinion would just be that over time I'd like to see it flipped to where he's playing like maybe like half of the third quarter mm. and then all of the fourth quarter. I disagree, but go ahead. All right. That's just – I'm just saying like my my bullshit. But I don't – Think about don't this. Really care, Fresh legs, bro. Right? If you get a five-minute break – before you get back in that game after a quarter, right? So it's more like a 12-minute break, all right? You're coming out there. Well, everybody else has been playing for that five minutes. You got fresh legs, and we usually see, you know, Shea go off for a good 10, 12 points in that time period. So I kind of like what Coach is doing, and, and I get it. It would be great to see him out in that fourth quarter, but this is where our other guys have got to step up in that fourth quarter. And I think that's what Coach is showing us is that these guys – have got to step up when Shea's not in the game because when Shea's not in the game, our, our offense is going almost stale. And that's got to change. Well, I wouldn't say it's almost stale. Well, I would I'm say... Trying to be kind, bro. Bro, it's like, it's like that bread that you left on the counter for four days and you can punt it easier than you can cut it. But look, oh. that's growing pains, bro. Yeah, man. That's growing pains. That's trust. That's, I mean, do you remember when Russ was standing on the sideline and wouldn't trust Coach Donovan? He would be like, I'm not going to sit down because I should be out there the whole time. That was a lack of trust. That was yeah. ugly. You're that right. was painful. Shea may, might have to play more catch up because he can't play the whole game. Okay. But at least we understand what we're in it together and everybody has to get better. That's oh, what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, and we saw that in the first half. That's why I was so encouraged about that first half. That first half, we looked like everything was clicking. Obviously, 60 points will do that to a team. You know, 63 points, whatever it was in that first half. We looked good. I felt like this is a perfect opportunity for this team to be putting things together. And then it was just like, you know, not that 20 points in, in a third quarter is bad, but giving up 40 or 38 points in that third quarter, that's what's the ball ball kicker was you know and there was no getting back after that you know yes we went to that fourth quarter with a slight lead but man it looked like we're done bro that's the unfortunate thing it's just young kids learning how to play total distraction bro total distraction but let's think about the 90s since we brought up some 90s shit Okay, what is the most embarrassing thing that you were a fan of from the 90s that you can remember? Oh, yeah, dude. I used to love those jeans, bro, those uh, wide-leg jeans. Jinko jeans? I know what you mean. I, I don't I don't think I ever had any Jinko. I got, what was the other wide-legs? The Doc Martens and wide-legs. Do you remember our, um, Rob and Nick Anthony were really into the Backstreet Boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always go back to that whenever I'm like, hey, man, I'm embarrassed about the trend that I got carried away with. I'm like, man, at least I never liked the Backstreet Boys. But well, Remember I, our cousin, she got a Make-A-Wish Foundation wish, and she chose to meet in sync. That was her back, second option, which is crazy thought, because... No, she met Backstreet Boys. She met the Backstreet Boys? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but I think she... Anyway, who cares? I'm not going to get carried away with the story too much. But my point is... Um, Boy bands. Were yes. you ever a fan of a boy band? Um, yes. Tell us. Backstreet Boys. You were a fan of the Backstreet Boys. Well, of course, because I had an older brother that forced me to listen to it whenever I was with him. Back street, back, all right. Yeah, dude, I jammed <laughs> down on that shit. No all shame. Right, who's there. your favorite Backstreet Boy? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> is there is there any question? What, dude? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't what, know you, names anymore. You don't know their names anymore? Uh, all right, all right, all right. See, the problem is there's like 
three groups there, man, you know? Yeah. Sync and Backstreet Nick, Boys. And you had like AJ. I listen. Had... Was it was it Nick or was it JT was on what? Justin Timberlake was, was on In Sync. In Sync. Okay, that's the uh, that's the that's how much I, I just like the music, man. The way they sang, the way they moved, you know, the, their jeans that they wore. <laughs> yeah, bro. I was all into that shit. But because right. it's Rob's fault, man. Fuck you, Rob. All right. Good. I just, I had to, I had to ask because you were acting like, oh, man, yeah, Mark. Yeah, yeah I can't believe that you like Nick Carter. What? Nick Who, Carter what? was playing Shaq one-on-one, making out with Lindsay Lohan and Hilary Duff. Like, you got to respect a little bit of the action. And you're sitting here being like, Oh yeah, man! I was a big fan of the Backstreet Boys. I, I like, like the, the Backstreet move. Boys. There's nothing wrong with what that. There's mean, nothing wrong you with like the way they boys move. dancing and singing. Men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're gonna be back after the next game against the Bucks. We'll see you then. <laughs>